Hello, my name is Jania Koshibayeva, I am research assistant at ISAI, and today I will explain you what is Monte Carlo simulation. Suppose you are standing in the middle of a dark room. There are two exit doors, you don't know where they are, but you want to find one. There are also two more wrong doors in the room, they are electrocuted, and if you find one, you will fail the game. So what do you do? We may develop some strategy of moving in the room. For example, you choose one random direction and follow it until you hit a wall. Then you turn left or right and walk along the wall until you find a door. You open the door and you either win or lose, depending which door you found. What if I asked you to find the probability of success in this game? The traditional way to calculate it would be dividing the number of exit doors by the number of all doors in the room, which is 2 exit doors over 4 doors overall, and it's equal to 50% chance of success. Easy, right? Let's make this game harder. Suppose you are standing in the middle of a dark maze. The maze has 4 ways out, which will lead you to the same problem, finding the exit in a dark room. What about probability of success now? This is not that trivial case like before. If we start using the rules of basic combinatorics, it will take quite some time to consider and calculate all options directly. What we can do is to simulate a path to the doors, again and again, many times, like so. Just making sure that we know the rules of the game, so that we don't jump through the walls of the maze or not stuck there forever. Imagine we run 10,000 of these simulations and recorded how many times you ended up finding an exit door. If you succeeded 4,000 times, which implies that other 6,000 times you were electrocuted by the wrong doors, then you would divide 4,000 by 10,000 and conclude that the probability of winning here is 40%. By following the rules of the game, we were able to figure out the probability. And essentially, that's how Monte Carlo simulation works. Let's define this approach. Monte Carlo simulation uses repeated random sampling of the inputs based on a set of predefined rules in order to estimate an unknown variable. We have a population, a set of examples. In our maze example, it was the collection of all possible paths through the maze. And there is a set of rules which included for us Stopping the game when you find a door, taking turn in the maze with, for example, 80% probability, turning left or right with 60-40 chance after bumping into a wall, and so on. So using this list of rules, we start simulating your behavior in the maze in order to calculate the unknown variable, the probability of finding an exit, and hope that in the end it will be a good estimator of the true value from the actual population. Monte Carlo simulation became possible after emergence of ENIAC, the first general-purpose digital computer. Stanislav Ulam on the left picture and John von Neumann on the right picture ran what is believed to be the first Monte Carlo simulation on ENIAC. ENIAC, pictured on the right image, was so big it filled the room and probably would take a couple of hours to simulate our maze example. Monte Carlo codename was used since Ulam and von Neumann were working on Manhattan Project to develop nuclear weapons in 1940s. This name referred to the Monte Carlo Casino in Monaco. Let's use this casino theme as an example of a motive to use Monte Carlo simulation. You probably have heard a saying, the house always wins, describing the bias towards casino's profitability. I will show you how Monte Carlo simulation can prove this point. For this purpose, Let's take an American roulette. It is a wheel with 38 packets with numbers from 1 to 36, 0 and double zero. There are many kinds of bets you can make, but to keep it simple, I will take a straight up bet only. To make this bet, you choose one single number in advance, which you think is gonna come up. Somebody drops a ball and gives the roulette a spin. And as the wheel slows down, the ball rolls closer and closer to the middle, and eventually it settles in one of those divisions. If you guess the right number, you win 35 times your bet. So for example, if your bet was $1, then you will win $35. If your guess was wrong, you just lose your money. Before simulating the outcomes, let's bet $1 and calculate the average profit of a gambler. 
you will win $35 in 1 out of 38 cases and lose $1 in 37 out of 38 cases. Calculate all that and you will get minus 2 over 38, which means that on average you lose 5.26% of your bet. Now this may not be a big scare for a gambler, they still can win some big money, right? Now let's simulate it. Take a look at this graph. This is the example of visualization of Monte Carlo simulation for straight up bet in American Roulette. Here and for the following simulations, a gambler starts with $10,000 and bets $100 for some number of sequential bets. Here it's 5 bets in a row. Each scenario for different numbers of bets will be simulated 100 times. Colored lines on the graph indicate separate simulations. The average amount of money left is indicated under each graph. For this case, a player starting with $10,000 will end up with $9,968 on average. If a player bets 10 times in a row, he will have $9,936 in the end. It is equivalent to losing $64. Notice that the amount lost in every scenario is close to 5.26%, which we calculated to be the expected loss earlier. Here, gambler made 10 bets, $100 each, which means he is expected to lose $52.6. This number is comparable to $64 we calculated our gambler to lose in the simulation. After 50 consequent bets, you will have $9,752. After 1,000 bets, $9,720. After 500 bets, only $6,908. After 1,000 bets, even $3,492. At this point, a regular gambler wouldn't be interested in such a number of bets, but the casino will. The casino is not interested uh, what will happen after 5 spins. Uh, they are interested in what will happen after a thousand, a million spins. Finally, after 10,000 bets, a gambler will be left with a debt of $39,348 on average. Look at the top blue line on the graph. There may be one lucky guy who will leave the casino with more than $150,000 and a couple of others who want some money too, but overall the casino will profit from the gamblers. And as was stated at the beginning, the house always wins. Let's consider another popular example of using Monte Carlo simulation, approximating the value of pi. The idea is to randomly simulate a number of points inside a square with sight of two units illustrated on the picture and imagine an in-circle of the square such that its radius will be one unit. Let's now derive pi from this ratio of area of the circle over area of the square. We know that the area of the circle is pi multiplied by its radius squared and the area of the square is equal to its squared side, which is twice the radius of the circle in this case. Dividing the numerator and denominator by r squared, uh, we get this simplified fraction pi over 4. Therefore, we can deduce the formula for estimating the value of pi, which is 4 times the area of the circle over the area of the square. If the number of simulated points is large enough, we can assume that this ratio is equal to the number of points generated inside the circle over the number of points generated inside the square, and we can substitute this value in our formula and estimate pi. The visualization of the simulation is shown on this slide. Notice that as the number of generated points n increases, the approximation of value of pi becomes closer and closer to what it actually is. In statistics, this phenomenon is called the law of large numbers. It states that the average of the outputs will converge to the true value of the variable as the number of repeated independent tests increases. Let's consider the final example for today, which is related to sports. If you have ever watched a tennis match, you probably saw the statistics they show. For example, location of rally hit points here. This one shows the serve directions. 
This one counts the winners and unforced errors of a player. This table illustrates the statistics about the serve, such as first serve speed, second serve speed, and return serves of a player. There is a lot of statistics to consider when we are talking about sports, and it can get very complicated if you want to, for example, decide who's gonna win the match based on this numerical data. This is where Monte Carlo simulation becomes useful again. If you simulate 1 million rallies or even matches using these stats as the input, you can predict the probability of winning of a person. This is a pretty standard product in the world of sports betting, which computes the risk of betting on a particular player for you. Also, Monte Carlo simulation was used on ELO rating systems before. ELO rating system is an estimator of the strength of a player in a game. In 2006 it was used to see if a baseball team will make the playoffs. This is the end of this video and I hope the Monte Carlo simulation concept is clear to you.